Hey yogis, welcome to my beginner's hour-long vinyasa flow class. We'll begin in Vajrasana, lightning bolt pose. So go ahead and uh, sit down, hips on top of the heels, knees out in front. Try to sit up nice and tall, maybe even pressing the tail down into the thighs a little bit, lifting up through the chest and the crown of the head. Soften anywhere you can, including the muscles of the face. And just start to connect with the breath. At first, just noticing the way the chest may rise as you, t as you take a nice deep breath in. And how it may fall as you take a nice deep, complete exhale. Start to deepen the breath. Maybe counting out those inhales to a four or a five. And the exhale's just a little bit longer, maybe a five or a six. Let go of everything from outside of the classroom, focusing the attention inward. We'll take a nice deep breath in together. Exhale, release. And you can gently open the eyes. So from here, we'll start by bringing the arms out to the sides. Turn the palms upward and inhale, stretch all the way up. Take a bind here, so interlace the fingers, press the palms up towards the ceiling. Draw downward deeper into the tail, lift up higher through the wrist creases. Make sure each and every finger is uh, pulling itself apart as if you could uh, pull the clasp apart. That much energy in between the arms. Suck those lower ribs and squeeze the shoulder blades behind. Deep breath in. And exhale the hands to the floor. Maybe you need to knock the tops of the feet into the floor. Just release anything in that area of the body. Let's find our tabletop. So knees underneath the hips, hands underneath the shoulders. We'll find cat and cow first. So maybe you tuck the toes for a little more grounding or feet stay where they are. On your next inhale, tilt the tail behind. Draw the heart forward. Back bending shape here in your cow pose. And exhale, round the back, press up at the back of the heart, finding your cat shape. Two more times. Inhale, lengthen, draw those lower ribs towards the floor, suck the belly in. Exhale, round, chin in towards the chest, press the hips forward, tucking the tail. One more, deep breath in. And exhale, round. neutral spine. We'll find a little balance. So start by bringing the weight onto the left knee, right toes will come to the mat behind. Just start to power up the back of the leg so you can flex the right quadricep here to lengthen more through the back of the knee. We'll lift the heel. Notice if you're shifting the weight over to the left, see if you can bring it on more back to center. On your next inhale, reach that heel a little bit higher, finding a cow shape. And exhale, into cat, drawing the knee forward, chin into chest. Maybe that knee even touches the forehead. Two more times, inhale, lengthening. Reaching up through the right heel, but not opening the hip, closing it down. Exhale, round. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, knee in towards the chest. Really draw the belly and engaging the core. And exhale. Or inhale, bring the knee onto the floor. If you need to take a little break here, shake off the wrist, go ahead and do that. Otherwise, we'll do that on the other side. Balancing in your tabletop. Start by bringing the left toes onto the mat behind, lengthening through uh, the heel. Lift up the back of the thigh. We'll inhale, bring the foot off the floor. Notice, shifting the weight to the right, draw it back to center. On your next inhale, lift the heel a little bit higher, keeping the toes flexed towards the front of the room. And exhale, knee into chest. You can point the toes and press the inside of the foot up towards the glute. Two more times, inhale, lengthen, maybe turning the gaze forward on this one. Exhale, round, chin into chest. Inhale, lengthen out, belly's gonna come in. And stay in as you draw that knee a little bit deeper in towards uh, the abdomen. Inhale, left knee comes onto the floor. Again, if you need to take a little rest in the dress and is shaking out the wrist, go ahead and do that. 
From here, we'll find downward dog. So knees separate, hip distance, bring them a little bit behind the hips this time. Claw at the floor with the fingers. Tuck the toes under. Lift the knees off the floor and press the upper body towards the lower. Maybe the ribs even find the thighs. Start to straighten out the legs more if you have the space, but if you notice, heels are lengthening and the upper body is coming towards the front of the room. Bend the knees again. Tilt the tail high. Draw the heart towards the floor. Maybe you open up the backs of the thighs, pedaling out a foot at a time if you'd like. Deep breath in. On the exhale, bend the knees, look forward. Maybe you take a little hop or you can walk. Step, find your way to the front of the mat. Find ragdoll, feet are gonna separate hip distance apart. You can grab onto alternate elbows or maybe you take this version with the tops of the hands on the floor, palms facing upward. Bend the knees so your upper body is going to pour over the lower body, kind of like a waterfall. Keep on lifting the hips up. Maybe even engage the quadricep, flex those muscles to straighten out the backs of the knees a little bit more. Bring the hands to the hips. Find a flat back cow shape here. Tail tilts behind, heart draws forward. Squeeze the shoulder blades together, send the elbows back, and you can press yourself all the way up to standing. We'll do a little tiptoe balance here. So if the feet can come all the way together comfortably, do that. Otherwise, a little bit apart will do as well. Start by just coming, bringing the weight onto the toes and lifting the heels just a little bit. It doesn't have to be a whole lot. Find your mountain shape now. So squeeze inner thighs, tuck the tail forward, draw the belly and lift the heart. Get longer, maybe you can start to come more and more onto the toes. Heels are going to want to splay out a little bit, see if you can draw them more inward. To challenge your balance, maybe you reach the fingertips up or gaze up. One more deep breath in, maybe your calves are burning, just bear with me. And exhale to the floor. You can shake out the legs, drawing the heels towards the glutes to loosen up a little bit. And we'll find some flow. Feet to the front of the mat. On the inhale, reach the arms high up towards the ceiling. Maybe the hands touch at the end of the inhale. And exhale, swan dive, forward fold. Soft knees here. Inhale, lengthen out your half forward fold. Maybe hands come to thighs or shins to keep that flat back, not rounding. Exhale, hands back to the floor. We'll step the left foot back now, coming into runner's lunge. If you need some blocks to help prop yourself up right here, Bring those blocks in, otherwise fingertips. Power up the back of the leg like we did in the stage before our balanced tabletop. And when you're ready, go ahead and inhale the arms upright, keeping the legs relatively where they are. Right knee above the ankle. Keep on bringing the left side of the body forward, right side of the body back, so we're squaring the hips and squaring the chest forward. Make sure the back knee not coming towards the floor and lengthening away. Inhale the arms upright, maybe you're turning the gaze up towards uh, the ceiling and hopefully you had your arms up the entire time. And exhale the hands to the floor. Step back, find your plank pose. Stack the shoulders above the wrists. If you look back and notice your hips are higher than the shoulders, draw them down. Broaden at the shoulder blades, hit the collarbones, getting nice and wide at the center of the body. Deep breath in. On your exhale, shoulders in front of wrists. If you need to bring knees onto the floor to do that, do that. But we're going to try to lower the heart towards the floor before the hips. So if you notice, this tends to be your chaturanga. See if you can tilt the tail high, lower the heart first. If you're on a plank, same thing. Elbows back, lower heart. Then the hips can come to the floor. Cobra next. Bring the hands to the lower ribs. Send the shoulders back. Press to the tops of the feet, engage the quadriceps, inhale, curl the heart forward. It's not about how high you can get yourself off the mat and how much you can straighten out the arms. Instead, bend the arms, sending the elbows back more, and curl the belly button, the heart more forward rather than lifting up. Deep breath in. Exhale, roll over the toes, downward dog. Take a few breaths, recenter. On 
On the inhale, reach the left heel up towards the ceiling. And exhale, left foot in between the hands. We're going to take a modified uh, or supported warrior three here. So the fingertips come out forward. Kick the back leg up, reaching the heel up. Notice, right hip wants to lift, draw it down, flatten out the back. Engage the inside of that left foot, squeeze the thighs towards one another. Inhale. And exhale, both feet will join forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, flatten out the back, half forward fold, belly and away from the thighs. And exhale, this time we'll set the right foot back, coming into runner's lunge. Squeeze the inner thighs, bring the left knee right above the left ankle, and when you're ready, bring the arms all the way up, trying to keep that stability in the lower body, upper body is the only thing that's lifting. Like the other side, right hip comes forward, left hip a little back, press up at the back of the right thigh. The more you flex the front of the right thigh, the easier that's going to be. Deep breath in as you extend the arms away from the floor, butt squeezing the shoulder blades in as you do that. Exhale, hands to the floor. Step back, plank pose. Engage the backs of the thighs, send the heels back, reach forward through the crown of the head. Maybe bring the biceps forward a little bit and uh, bend the elbows a bit so we're not hyperextending. Inhale. Exhale, lower maybe on knees if you notice the hips are fighting the floor before the upper body. Definitely try that. Press the tops of the feet, root down through the tail. Inhale, cobra. Draw the shoulders down, lengthen through the back of the head so we're not looking up and dumping that weight in between the shoulder blades, but just so lengthening out there as well. Inhale, exhale, roll over the toes, downward dog. Adho Mukha Vrkshasana. See if you can activate the feet a little bit more. The more you lift those toes or flex them, the more space you're going to get behind the calves. So if you notice that's your tight spot, heels not wanting to come closer towards the floor, try working those toes a little bit more. On your next inhale, reach the right heel up towards the ceiling, one-legged downward dog. Exhale, right foot in between the hands. We're setting up for that uh, supported warrior three again, so fingertips come out about a foot in front of that right foot. Maybe you come onto a block as well. Inhale, the left heel up. Heel is only going to be about hip level and reach out through the heel, reach forward through the chest, trying to find a flat back. Belly comes in away from the thighs, squeeze the inner thighs towards one another. Inhale, exhale, both feet to the floor, forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, reach the palms out to the side, soft knees as you lift all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart center. We'll do that flow again, this time just going a little bit deeper. Feet close together. Inhale, reach up, Urdhva Hastasana, upward hands. Exhale, fold over the thighs, keeping the belly in. Inhale, flat back, send the tail far behind, heart forward. And exhale, hands to the floor, step the left foot back, body your runner's lunge again. Right knee above the ankle, power up the back of the left thigh. Inhale, arms up right. So we're going to do, be doing some back bending shapes and forward folding shapes in our crescent. So... When you inhale, next time, send the hips more forward and reach the fingertips back. Squeeze the shoulder blades in, lengthen through the fingers. And exhale, fold forward, maybe more weight into that right foot. Really extend up, looking straight forward to help the balance or down towards the floor. Inhale, lengthen back again, back bending, making that tummy nice and hard, not just softening there, using the core to support. Exhale, come back forward. Inhale, lengthen up. Hopefully your lower body was pretty stable and still throughout those. If not, that's okay. But exhale, the hands to the floor. Go ahead and step back, plank pose again. If you need a break from these planks, all you have to do is bring the knees onto the floor and to increase difficulty, shoulders in front of the wrists, turning the biceps forward. Otherwise, inhale. Exhale, lower, chaturanga. So maybe here you come into upward dog, shift the shoulders more forward, come to the tops of the feet, and uh, lift the heart upward. 
different stages of that. Maybe you stay on the knees and just lift the hips. But if you notice your shoulders are all, over, all up here, lengthen them away, or hips on the floor, come back to Cobra. Make your way back to Downward Dog. Find those deep, smooth cycles of breath again. We're going to inhale the left heel up towards the ceiling, one leg at Downward Dog. And exhale, left foot in between the hands. Supported Warrior Three again, fingertips forward. Lift the right heel up. You can either stay here, maybe practice one hand at a time, bringing it to the shoulders, practicing up bringing weight away from the hands, or maybe you come up into a Warrior Three with hands to heart center, trying to flatten out the back. Inhale. Exhale, hands to the floor, right foot as well, forward fold. Inhale, flat spine. Exhale, hands to the mat. Set the right foot back this time. We'll inhale up, crescent lunge. We'll find those back bends and forward folds on this side. Now, so on the next inhale, lift the heart more, send the hips more forward. Fingertips maybe reach a little bit farther back. Don't try too hard, see what you can do. Exhale, fold forward a little bit more. Belly still away from the thighs. Maybe war weight into that right foot. Inhale, lengthen back. Exhale, reach forward. Inhale, back up to high lunge. And exhale, those hands to the floor. Go ahead and step the right foot back to meet the left. Plank pose. See if you can draw the hands towards the body and away from one another. Away from one another is going to help broaden the upper back towards the toes. It's going to help draw the energy kind of towards the midline. Inhale. Exhale. Chaturanga. Whole breath to get into the pose, not just coming towards the floor. Whole inhale and up dog as well, not just zipping up. Exhale. Roll over the toes. Downward dog. Keep on sending the heart towards the shins, opening up at the armpits, drawing the shoulder blades onto the back. Inhale, lift the right heel up towards the ceiling, one-legged downward dog. And exhale, bring the right foot in between the hands. If it doesn't quite make it there, by the way, use blocks or maybe lift onto the right fingertips to help bring the right foot a little more forward. On the inhale, left heel is gonna lift. Square the hips, squeeze the inner thighs a little more weight into the inside of the right foot. And again, maybe practice just weight onto one set of fingertips at the time. Or hands to heart center. Find a little balance, flatten out the back. It helps if you extend in two opposing directions. Inhale. And exhale, both hands to the floor. And I'll reach all the way up. And exhale, hands to heart center. Okay, go ahead and take a, take a big step back up, facing the wide edge of the mat. Left foot or right, really doesn't matter. We'll start by turning the toes out and take some uh, goddess squats. Bring the hands to heart center. Bring the knees out towards the toes. So you're going to bend the hips back and the knees will want to travel towards the toes. So if the toes are here and the knees want to come out, maybe bring the toes where the knees want to find themselves. Keep on lengthening through the inner thighs, not back bending behind, but sending the tail straight towards the floor. We'll start to rock side to side here, just finding a little more space around the knees, around the ankles. Again, you don't want the knees to come too far out. Try to keep them above the ankles. Same with the hips, not too far out. Right in line with those knees if you can. Okay, deep breath in, toes still out to the sides, and exhale the hands to the floor. So we're still going to be in a squatting position here, this time maybe just a little bit deeper. So you can crawl the hands out to the right and lengthen the inside of the left thigh towards the floor as the right knee turns out, and then walk yourself over towards the left. If you need to keep the hips lifted, keep the hips lifted. Walk two more times per side, nice and slowly. 
Engaging the insides of the thighs, still feeling them lengthening, really engaging the insides and outsides of the feet as well. Keep that belly in. So the next time we come over to the right, maybe you're with me or it takes you a moment to get here. See if you can drop the hips a little bit lower. Maybe come onto the left heel and lift the toes up, anchoring the whole bottom of the leg and in the floor. This isn't happening for you. Maybe you're more up here, that's fine too. If the right heel needs to lift, you can lift the right heel. A lot of flexibility at the back of the calf shed, so uh, just be gentle with that area. We'll come back over to the left. Same thing over here, dropping the hips. As the, if this is as deep as you go, stay here. If you can lower them more, keep the knee out and lift the right toes, go ahead and do that as well. You wanna sink the tail low and keep the heart high. Deep breath in, and exhale, walk yourself back over to wide legs. We'll find wide-legged forward fold shape, Prasarita Padottanasana. Feet are gonna be pretty wide. If you bring the arms out to the sides, they should be kind of parallel. On the inhale, lift the heart, send the hips back, and on the exhale, fold a little bit deeper. So we're just gonna rock side to side here, right to left. Left or right, keeping the legs a little straighter, not those side lunges or uh, bends that we just did, but straight legs this time. When you find your way over to the right side, you can go ahead and maybe hands over towards the right foot or grab onto the shin or ankle, draw the upper body towards that right thigh. This is your uh, side uh, wide-legged forward fold, Parshva Prasarita Padottanasana. Keep on setting the tail high, drawing weight into the toes. Back over towards the left side, slowly with control. Hands just either out to the left, they don't have to touch the foot. If they find it, can use it, grab onto it, draw the chest towards the shin, crown of the head towards the toes. Keep on energizing through the legs. Just because we don't have uh, hands on the floor doesn't mean that uh, we don't have to energize those legs all the way. Inhale, exhale back to center. On your next inhale, lengthen the inner thighs, bring the arms out to the sides, flat back, and then you can press yourself all the way upright. Another big step back to the front of the mat, shaking out the legs if you need to. Bring the feet close together. Inhale, reach the arms out to the sides. And exhale, fold forward. Inhale, find your flat back, a seven shape. And exhale, we'll hop back into plank from here. So maybe you need to bring the feet a little bit farther back so you can bend the knees a little bit more. We're gonna keep the biceps facing forward, elbows soft, knees soft. Maybe you hop back lightly on the toes, just like this. Doesn't have to be all the way into plank or downward dog. We will find downward dog from here, straightening out the arms, straightening out the legs a little bit more. Bring the feet a little closer together. On the inhale, reach the right heel up towards the ceiling, one-legged downward dog. And exhale, right knee into chest, flow forward. Think of that cat shape we made earlier with the knee on the floor, just lifting the back of the leg this time. Right foot finds the floor, maybe lifting the right fingertips or using that right hand to bring the foot in between the hands. Inhale up, high lunge, a familiar shape by now. And exhale, warrior two. So the left foot's gonna come back just a little, maybe toes face the wide edge of the mat. Keep the right knee above the ankle. Send the hips towards the floor, lengthening the insides of the thighs, sending both leg bones back into space. And you can reach out in two opposing directions. Maybe you look left arm, right arm, making sure they're about level here and the fingertips are reaching away from the body. On the next inhale, straighten out the front leg. We're coming into a triangle shape. I'm going to bring my back foot in just a little bit. We're going to take the, these triangles in some stages. So we'll reach the arms in two opposing directions, squeeze up through the insides of the thighs, draw the belly in. On the inhale, we'll lengthen out forward as far as you can get, keeping the heart lifted up, maybe the gaze up, and exhale, we'll come upright. Inhale, maybe you reach a little bit farther this time, hand can come to knee and the left hand can swivel up towards the ceiling, bring yourself upright, two more of these before we find our final pose. 
a little bit farther this time, maybe onto the shin, using the core more than using the hand. So if you bring the hand away, you should be able to keep yourself upright. One more time. Inhale up. Lean forward. So maybe right hand stays on the thigh or on the shin. It doesn't have to get to the floor. If you need a block, place it on the inside or the outside of that foot. And you can extend the left hand up towards the ceiling. Draw the belly and you want to lengthen through the outside of the left hip. So send it towards the back of the room as you extend the chest forward, lengthen through the crown of the head. On your inhale, think about expanding through the chest and the belly, lifting a little bit deeper away from the floor. And exhale, extending out in five different directions. On your next inhale, zip yourself all the way back upright. We're going to try the same type of thing, but doing a revolve triangle, Pariyurta Trikonasana this time. So the left toes are going to come out facing the left front corner of the room. And if the uh, hips are a little tighter, the heels don't have to align like triangle. The heel can come out a little bit more if you need it to, not too far out. Swivel the hips. It's facing the hips and the chest forward. So on the inhale, you're going to reach out forward through the left hand, maybe right hand to the hip, or if it can extend out comfortably, do that. And you can exhale back up. And inhale, lengthen forward again, maybe hand to thigh or a little bit deeper onto the shin. Maybe the right fingertips reach up and you can gaze up two more times. Come on back. Inhale, lengthen forward. You want to spend a lot of time reaching forward and keeping that length, not rounding as you bring the hand to the shin. And come back upright. And then all the way to the pose. So maybe just stay one hand to the hip and hand to the thigh and twist over. If the hand finds the floor inside of the foot or outside, a little trickier, you can use the blocks, extend the right hand up towards the ceiling. Keep on sending the right hip back, the left hip forward. If you look back and see the right hip is poking out towards the side of the mat, bring it right behind that right ankle. On your next inhale, arms up right here. Exhale, bend the front knee, both hands to the floor. Bring the left toes back a little bit more, right foot's gonna meet the left. Lower all the way onto the floor. Hopefully still heart before the hips. We'll find locust pose this time, Shalabhasana. Extend outward through the toes and then plant the tops of the feet into the floor. We'll lift the kneecaps. Send the pelvic bones into the floor and reach the arms behind. Start by lengthening the fingertips on the floor. They're not leaving the floor quite left yet. Even lift the heart, send the shoulders back. Fingertips still on the floor. When you're ready. Without shoulders coming towards the ears, lift the hands up, lift the legs up. Energy in between the arms and legs, they don't have to come all the way together, but don't let them splay any wider than hip distance or shoulder distance. Inhale. Exhale slowly back to the floor. Use the hands, press yourself through child's pose maybe, or back up into your up dog, down dog. You can always take a rest instead of down dog, don't feel afraid. You just come into your child's pose. I can't see what you're doing on this end of the camera, so really whatever restful pose or more active pose, if you wanted to do that as well, take that. We'll do this on the other side. Feet a little closer together. Inhale the left heel up towards the ceiling, one-legged dog. Exhale the left foot in between the hands. Inhale up to crescent lunge, high lunge, and exhale, warrior two. Maybe widen the feet just a little bit more, left knee above the ankle. See if you can send the leg bones back into space, sending the tail more deeply towards the floor. Shoulder blades maybe squeezing in a little bit, lengthen out through the fingertips. Gaze is steady over that left middle finger. Make sure the belly is in and the heart is lifting as well. And inhale, straighten out that front leg. I'm going to have to take a little bit of a step in. We'll do those same uh, pulses, if you will, or just getting into the pose slowly. So on the inhale, lean forward, keeping the heart lifted. Squeeze in your thighs. Exhale, come upright. Inhale, a little bit more forward. Maybe the hand grazes the thigh or the shin. Reach the right fingertips up. Exhale, bring yourself back upright two more times. Inhale forward, maybe going even farther this time. Hand to the shin. Reach up, maybe look up. Exhale, come upright. Deepest one, you can stay in either of those stages you went the first time or reach out so far. Legs straight, 
Heart still lifted, reach the right fingertips up towards the ceiling. So you don't want the heart to be facing towards the floor. So if you notice right hip or the chest are facing the floor, maybe come a little bit more upright so you can keep all the length in the sides of the bodies, not folding, lengthening. On the next inhale, draw yourself all the way upright. We'll try a revolved triangle this time. Right toes come in a little bit. Toes are gonna splay out like you're a intense side stretcher, warrior one toes on the right side anyway. Squeeze inner thighs. On the inhale, reach the right fingertips forward, maybe left back or hip is gonna be more comfortable. And exhale, you can come upright. Inhale, lengthen out a little bit deeper this time, keeping the heart revolved, not forward folding, revolved. Bring yourself back upright two more times. Maybe you get to the hand to the shin this time, reach the left fingertips up. Exhale, back upright. Inhale, lengthen forward, reach out and the hand can come to the inside of the foot or outside. Lift the left fingertips up towards the ceiling. Keep on sending the left hip back into space, right hip forward, belly and revolve it to the outside of the left thigh. Again, if you feel like you're folding in this shape or shoulders are lower than the hips, maybe bring a block in, bend knee, anything you can do to support the length in the body. Inhale back up right. Bend the front knee, hands to the floor. Lower into chaturanga, left foot meets the right first. All the way down, elbows squeezing into the sides. Locust pose again, reach the toes back, plant the tops of the feet into the floor. Arms back as well, fingertips reach back, ears crown of the head, keep on lifting forward. If you like, maybe a bind this time. If you don't want the bind, maybe fist touch. Maybe hands behind the heart, that's gonna be your hardest one. Or maybe just keep the arms straight lifting back. The legs can lift as well. Try to balance in between the hip points and the belly button, making that your balance point, extending away from both of those and lifting up as well. Inhale, exhale slowly down. Hands come to either side of the chest. The symbol all mean in child's pose, knees wide or together. Especially if you're feeling stiff in the lower back, maybe keep the knees a little bit closed. Really find your breath. Maybe you notice the heart beating out of the chest. Take this moment just to slow it down. Give it permission to rest. Inhale. Exhale, press yourself up into tabletop. We'll find a seat from here so you can cross the legs out behind or swivel them out to the side. So you can uncross the legs and bring them out to a wide position if you'd like. I'm going to face the long edge of my mat. You don't have to. Bring the legs in a 90 degrees if you don't know quite what that looks like. Maybe a block will fit right in the shape here. It doesn't have to be 90 degrees. Sit up nice and tall. Maybe you bring the hands behind the back to help. Lift the uh, lower back. You don't want to be rounding the tail. A little lift in. Come to the front of the seat, so not the back of the seat. Shift forward. Lengthen out through the heels. Plank the calves, the thighs into the floor. Root them in a little bit deeper. Flex the quadriceps. So from here, we'll start with Johnny Sears Shots in a head to knee pose. We'll lift the left knee and bring the foot in. So this is a little bit more of a wider stance for your head to knee pose. If you need, if you know you need to shift the hips over towards the straight leg, go ahead and shift them over. Otherwise you can have this more open stance. We'll take the revolve variation first. So the right arm is going to come on top of the right leg or maybe you bring a block to either side. We'll lift up through the left arm. As you inhale, reach the whole left side of the body outside of the hip, lifting up through the armpit and then exhale, sink a little bit deeper over towards the right toes. Like our triangle shapes, you want to stay lifted. So yeah, maybe you can find the toes like this, but you're rounding. Maybe you find them instead by lifting and extending. So eventually, maybe the right hand gets closer towards the foot. Maybe the left finds that it doesn't have to. Make sure you can breathe as well. If you have that full bind and you can't breathe those full deep breaths, come out of it just a little bit. Don't get too attached to what the pose is maybe supposed to look like instead how it feels in the body. On your next inhale, all the way upright. 
John Euser Sasana uh, folded variation this time. I'm going to close my hips in a little bit more for this one. Square the chest, square the hips towards the straight leg. Inhale, arms up right, and exhale, fold forward. Maybe you find the foot if you can't quite find it. Strap it up, or hands to either side of the leg just like this. We'll do a half fold, lifting the heart higher, the tail out behind, and fold a little bit deeper. Eventually, maybe you uh, find the foot or you have a clasp where you can bind onto the right hand, pull the wrist over, and uh, bind this way. You certainly do not have to find that. And it is called head to knee pose, but if the head's to the knee, you're rounding the cervical spine. Think about bringing the shin instead there, crown of the head towards the toes. Draw that belly and press through the outside of the left hip still like we were doing when we revolve. Deep breath in. And exhale, you can crawl yourself upright. Reach in that left leg. Bring it out and over. We'll do the other side. Bring the right foot in, finding revolve Janu Sirsasana, Pariverta Janu Sirsasana. Square the chest towards the bent knee this time. Left leg, arm over the leg. Reach the right fingertips up. As you inhale, lengthen the right side of the body away from the floor. And exhale, extend over towards the left toes, which are still flexed and strong, by the way. Eventually, again, maybe sink out more deeply through the left hand. Maybe more deeply through the right, finding the foot. If you find the bind, use it to revolve yourself open. You want the heart lifted, not towards the floor. Inhale, maybe draw the shoulder blades onto the back to help extend the whole upper body over the leg. And exhale, bring yourself upright. Gonna shift over towards that straight leg, squaring the hips, squaring the heart. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold over the thigh again. Maybe just hands, maybe you find the foot. Inhale, flatten out the back. Maybe spread the butt cheeks a little bit more to help ground into the floor. And exhale, so hands here, hands here. Maybe this time you bind onto the left wrist with the right hand. Pull on the ball of the foot, shoulder blades into the back, square evenly. So if you notice it's easier for the left hand to come to the floor and your heart is open, close it down. You can even do this, draw the heart more over towards the outside of the thigh just to balance the shoulders a little bit better. On your inhale, bring yourself upright. Re-extend that right leg. Okay, we'll bring the legs a little bit closer this time. Actually, feet all the way together for Baddha Konasana bound angle. So outsides of the feet are gonna press in towards one another. As if you had something to keep here and not let it sink into the floor, you want the feet that active. And then press the insides of the feet away from one another, flexing the toes. If the hands can't come out in front, you can bring them behind. And we're gonna to wanna to keep on shifting the heels towards the pelvis, pelvis towards the heels. A lot of energy coming in between the heels and the body. Notice the lengthening of the insides of the thighs, trying to send the knees a little bit deeper outward, not smashing them towards the floor, but lengthening them out. If you'd like to go deeper, you can always fold by bringing the elbows to the thighs or maybe the shins. Try to bring the heart towards the feet. Again, tendency for here, uh, this pose might be too round, head towards the toes and you think you have the pose perfect. Maybe try extending the crown of the head forward instead. Most importantly, breathe, not sacrificing form at any point during your practice or sacrificing breath for form, I should say. And again, just because we don't have uh, the hands on the feet uh, making them uh, do their extra work, you could want to keep on doing that. So heels press in towards one another, big toes extend away, keep all that energy in the thighs. Deep breath in, and exhale all the way upright. Bring those knees up. You can bring the hands behind the back, just a little windshield wiper side to side. We'll do twist next. Ardha Matsandrasana, half Lord of the Fishes. Left leg is gonna come out, and bring right the right knee to the outside of the left thigh. 
If you can lean over to the left, bring the left leg towards the right hip and sit up tall like this, do that. If you notice you're leaning a little bit without the hand, prop just the left seat up with a blanket. I promise it'll help. Bring the right hand behind the back. Inhale, lengthen out through the left side. And exhale, you can grab onto the right knee either with the elbow or the outside of the arm and rotate over towards the right. Draw the belly and bringing it to the outside of the right thigh. And if this just isn't deep enough for your twist today, maybe you turn the palm towards the floor, try to bind in between or inside the little hole that's in that right leg. Maybe you bring the right hand back, turn the palm up, find the hands. If you find the bind, draw the hands towards the floor, squeeze the shoulder blades back to uh, open up the heart a little bit more into the twist. Inhale, maybe you keep turning the gaze over towards the wall behind you. And exhale, slowly soften, we'll take a counter twist. So just other side here, left hand behind the back, right elbow to knee, rotate over towards the left side. Notice any difference in the hips. I tend to feel this a little bit more through the left hip, whereas uh, the other side I felt it at the right hip. Maybe you feel the same, you don't have to. And bring yourself back to center. Right foot comes out to its side, the left foot's going to come out as well. Sit up nice and tall. And we'll do the other side. Right leg is going to extend this time. Go ahead and bring the left foot to the outside of the right thigh. It can stay in the inside, doesn't have to come to the outside. If you can lean over, right hand into the floor, bring the foot out towards the left hip, do that as well. Blanket can always come underneath the right hip to help yourself sit up a little taller. Bring the left hand behind the back. Close behind the back, not leaning back to get the shape, but just as a little support to keep the body upright. Inhale, reach out through the right arm. And exhale, tricep to thigh or just grabbing onto the knee. Rotate, look over that left shoulder. Draw the belly in. Press down a little bit deeper through the left foot, through the right foot to lift up higher through the chest and the crown of the head. If you'd like to find the bind, first the tricep has to come to the front of the thigh. If you can flip the palm, flip the palm, bring it in between uh, that little hole in the left thigh. Right hand can, left hand can come find the right. Pull the bind down, lift the heart, twist a little bit deeper. Keep on pressing that right tricep, especially still back into the left thigh. Inhale. And exhale, back to center. Keep the legs where they are, we'll do a counter twist. Right hand close behind the back, again, not leaning back, bringing shoulders right above the hips, seeing if you can keep them there. Left elbow to thigh, twist to the other side. And make your way back to center. Lean over to the left, straighten out the left, left leg, right leg comes back, straighten out the right leg. Bring the left leg to its side, straighten out both legs, sit up nice and tall. If you need to rock the legs side to side, roll out the toes. Go ahead and uh, loosen up a little bit. We're going to do one more uh, hip opener, and it's not seated. It's actually on the knees. Frog pose. I'll do this at a couple angles so you can understand what's going on. If your uh, knees are sensitive to the insides of them, bring a blanket, lay it out on the entire mat. We'll start in tabletop, and then we'll just widen the knees a little bit more. And if this is comfortable, widen the knees a little bit more. Once you have the knees a little wider, maybe the toes can turn out. You want the heels behind the knees, so make sure they're there. Bring the knees out a little bit more. So you can stay just like this, squeezing the inner thighs, so not just letting gravity pull the knees away, but using the strength to keep the body safe. Those muscles that they inner groin, inner thighs, and knees, you want to keep on uh, using them to keep yourself upright. So one thing you may notice in this pose, and I'm going to shift onto my side, you stay where you are, is it's going to be easier if the hips are forward. You want to keep them above the knees, don't let them uh, come out in front. Same with behind, that's going to be harder though, so try to keep them right above the hips. And you can stay in this pose for uh, several minutes if you'd like. <laughs> A lot of people don't find it comfortable, but if you can, I find it tolerable. 
maybe onto forearms and maybe onto the belly as well at some point. If you're feeling straight pain, ease a little bit out of the pose. Your knees do not have to be as wide as they are. Just bring them in a little bit. A nice intense stretch is good. This is not supposed to be easy. Couple more breaths here. Maybe you close the eyes and just focus internally on what's happening. A little bit of less uh, external stimuli will free up some space in the brain to help you uh, bring your awareness inward. See if you can uh, help out your pose just by paying attention to the signs and signals your body may be sending you. We'll come back upright. So if you can come onto hands, come onto hands. Maybe it helps to just shift one knee at a time, bringing an ankle in a little bit closer to until you can bring yourself upright. If you need to straighten out the legs, you can come into a downward dog or pedal out the feet in a plank. Any pose that would feel good for the knees, ankles, inner thighs. A little twist in downward dog, go ahead and find that. And we'll uh, come onto our backs. We did a lot of opening at the insides of the thighs during this practice. We're gonna do a little bit of opening for the outsides, a little bit more tops of the thighs, backs of the thighs as well. We'll start in wind reliever, so you can draw, draw both the knees in towards the chest, interlace the hands at the top of the shin bones, and maybe rock side to side. Just compressing the abdomen into the thighs, freeing some space around the hip flexors, the lower belly. And then extend the legs all the way down to the floor. Supine mountain pose, so the feet can reach forward, the hands may reach behind, and I'm probably out of the frame at this point, but you get the point. Mountain pose or upward hands pose just on the back. Maybe squeezing the inner thighs, tucking the tail, same exact shape as you would make standing up so you can act as if the bottoms of the feet were into the floor. Okay, draw the right knee in, half wind reliever, flex both sets of toes, anchor that left leg into the floor. You want to make sure there's no space between the thigh or the calf. If you do this and there is space, maybe you bring the left foot on the floor, always that option available. So keep on rooting through the left side of the body as you lift the upper body off the floor and it'll bring the hand either to the inside of the foot or the outside for your half happy baby. See if you can press the foot flatly up towards the ceiling. Kind of our half squat chip we did during practice so you can turn the knees and toes out a little bit more but eventually maybe you squeeze the knee more into the armpit and keep the toes straight behind. Maybe not today and that's fine. Keep on anchoring down through the left side of the body. Deep breath in. And then exhale, upper body off the floor again. Supine pigeon, so you'll grab onto the right foot with the left hand, right hand into the right knee, and you'll start to bring the shin towards the chest. The inside of the foot's gonna wanna come closer towards the body. See if you can see less of the inside of the foot by pressing the big toe on towards the left wall and flexing the toes back towards the body. Flex the outer calf into the right hand as well. Maybe you bring it all the way to the chest. Maybe you recline all the way to the back. Or maybe you're up here and the shin isn't quite parallel and you're just doing your uh, pigeon upright just like this. Don't try to force it. One more deep breath in. And exhale, take a hold of this right knee, bring it all the way onto the left side. So I'm gonna come all the way off the right side of my body for a more intense twist here. Right knee comes a little bit higher up, maybe top of the foot on the floor, or the right knee can be a little bit farther down. Reach the left arm out towards the left side of the room and you can open up the right side, reaching the right fingertips towards the wall on the other side of the left fingertips and squeeze the shoulder blades in. We're trying to flatten out the spine a little bit more to uh, twist the upper back. If you're still right shoulder above the left, reaching out, that is perfectly fine too. Left cane can also come to the thigh to ground the thigh deeper as you draw the belly in and rotate the upper body deeper towards the opposite side of that knee. Okay, so we're gonna go for a quad stretch in this shape right here. Right knee can stay where it is. See if you can bring the left foot up Grab onto it with the right foot, draw the foot towards the floor, keeping the heel in towards the glute. Come back into your twist. 
Right shoulder can reach to the floor. Left leg can stay bent, or if you want a little bit more of a challenge, extend the leg. Maybe the left hand finds that it certainly does not have to. One thing you may notice is this right knee is going to come out towards the left side. See if you can point it more towards the front of the room. And if that's not happening, that's fine as well. Just see what you can do. Deep breath in. Exhale, bring yourself back to center. Re-extending in your supine mountain pose. Arms and right legs pull in opposing directions. Other side. Start by drawing the left knee up into half wind reliever. Reaching the heels out, flexing the toes back towards the body. Maybe you squeeze the shoulder blades in and draw the belly in for a deeper rooting down connection into the support underneath you. From here, half happy baby. Reach the chest off the floor. It's going to be easier to find the foot this way, inside or out. Try to draw the knee in towards the armpit. Knee can come out just a little bit to get the knee deeper, but try to squeeze it in back in if you can. And if you notice, when you soften back onto the mat, this right leg tends to lift a little bit. Maybe the foot can come onto the floor to help support and a deep and uh, the connection with the right side of the floor. Keep on flexing the toes. From here, we'll do our supine pigeon. So upper body off the floor again. Start to bring the shin towards the midline. Right hand's going to find that outside of the left foot. Left knee can come, uh, left hand can come to the knee. Stay upright, maybe paralleling the shin more. If the foot is lower towards the hip, that's perfectly fine. Maybe one day it gets more parallel towards the knee. Doesn't have to be today. And if you can bring the shin there and recline all the way, fine this. But again, maybe right foot into the floor to help support. This is smoky over here. A deep breath in. We'll find our supine twist. So you're going to take this left knee, bring it all the way over towards the right. Notice how I don't have any of the left side of the body on the floor still. This is how we're going to set up this pose. Left knee can be higher or lower parallel to the knee. Then you can bring the head back down onto the floor. Maybe reach out towards the left side. And if I said left knee parallel to the knee, I meant parallel to the hip or higher for a deeper twist, lower for a more accessible one. So again, left shoulder blade may not touch the floor. Sometimes this is super uncomfortable for some people. You can always bring a blanket underneath the left side if you'd like to. I just find a deeper stretch with my left knee on the floor and not lifted, sacrificing my left shoulder blade on the floor and lifting it instead. If you'd like to go for that quad stretch, you're going to lift the upper body off the floor. Kick the right heel towards the glute. Find the inside of the foot. You can even stay upright for this one if you can't come back down onto the back. Pull the heel in towards the glute, and maybe you'll notice, oh, my knee's way out to the right. I'm gonna try to bring the knee more close to center. You're gonna be really on the right side of the body in order to parallel the knee as well. So on the right side body heavily, not on that left butt cheek. Can come back into the twist. Twist over towards the left. Maybe the shoulder blade comes deeper into the floor. Elbow roots as well. Turn the gaze over uh, towards the left side of the room to stretch out the neck as well. Belly in, drawing towards the left side of the room, knee rooting towards the right. Inhale. Exhale, maybe you lift up, gently release. One more stretch out here, both sides. So we didn't do uh, any inversions or back bends today. It is a beginner level flow. So if you're not working on any of those yet, stop your lesson here. If you know, oh, I need a bridge or a fish pose or any other type of back bend for, before closing, maybe a shoulder stand or headstand, go ahead and find that. Otherwise, we'll come straight into our Shavasana. Widen the arms and legs. Enough that the toes roll out and the palms face upward. So if you look up and notice the palms are more down and the toes are forward, widen the stance just a little bit more. This uh, palms up and toes outwards is just a gesture of uh, trusting the support underneath you, that it's going to keep you safe while you rest. 
We're not uh, using any flexibility or balance or strength. So you can just uh, dedicate all your energy here to softening. Softening first the uh, physical body, especially maybe the muscles of the face. Try and do grip less, soften more. Bring your awareness into your breath. If you notice you're still breathing those deep breaths that we cultivated at the beginning of practice and maintain during practice, you can soften those now. Just coming to your natural or subconscious rhythm of breath. That breath you're breathing throughout the day without even ever noticing. Quiet the mind as well. Let go of any thoughts that are trying to pull you away from the body, pull you away from the present. If you find yourself uh, wandering off, just bring yourself back, anchoring yourself into your Shavasana using the breath or just awareness of the body. Just like in uh, other poses, we're uh, using either muscular effort or something else during the pose. Shavasana is the same thing. We're just strengthening the mind instead of the breath body or the physical body. So think of it that way. Keep alert, keep active. Thank you so much for watching. Like or subscribe if you like my videos. I always take requests as well. Namaste.